finite difference approximations. We'll first talk about what a finite difference approximation is, and then I want to generalize the concept of a finite difference because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what finite differences are and what they can do. And I want to not have you confused or misled about that. What are finite difference approximations? Let's suppose we have a function and I'm showing that function in the dash blue line. Now we won't actually know the function itself. I'm just drawing this here for illustration purposes, but we know the function at discrete points. We know it at F1, position X1, F2 at position X2, and F3 at position X3. So if we have a discrete function, what do we do if we want to know the value at it of its derivative at some point? This is what a finite difference is intended to do. It's so that we can estimate derivatives with discrete data. So let's think about what the first order derivative is. Let's say we want to calculate the first derivative at the second point. Well, the first derivative is slope. So if we draw a tangent to the actual function, this is the true slope. This is what we want to get. But of course, we can't know this. We have to somehow estimate this. How can we estimate that? Well, one way we could do that is connect F2 and F3 with a line. And we can estimate the true slope with this approximate slope, the slope of the line connecting F1 to F3. Well, what is slope? What is the slope at X2? It is rise over run. What is the rise? Well, it's F3 minus F1. That's the rise. What's the run? It's 2 delta x because we're going from F1 to F2 and then up to F3. So we're actually going 2 delta x's, if you will. So rise F3 minus F1 and the run 2 delta x. This is a finite difference approximation for estimating the first order derivative of this function at point x2. Now suppose we want the second order derivative. Let's back up and let's calculate the first derivative but at these midpoints so what if i want the first order derivative at the midpoint between f1 and f2 well a great way to estimate that is with the slope of the line connecting f1 to f2 so applying what we saw previously the finite difference approximation for the first order derivative at position 1.5 would be f2 minus f1 that would be the rise divided by delta x Right, so we're gonna have rise over run. That gives us our a way to estimate the derivative at the midpoint. Now let's go to the midpoint between two and three. So what is the derivative at 2.5? Well, rise over run again. So it's gonna be F3 minus F2 divided by delta X. This is how we would estimate the first order derivative at 2.5. Now, why did we do that? We're after the second order derivative. The second order derivative is the first order derivative of the first order derivative. So we now have expressions for the first order derivatives at two points. Let's apply this finite difference approximation that we keep using of rise over run, but use the first order derivative. So the rise for the first order derivative between these two points is F prime at X 2.5 minus the f prime at x 1.5 right these are our two finite differences that we just approximated divided by the run delta x so i simply take my expression for the derivative at x1 and i'm going to put that in here and get this i have an expression for the derivative at x of sub 2.5 i plug that in here and get this okay now i perform math i simplify and i end up here and this actually is my finite difference approximation for estimating the second order derivative at position x2. So with some simple hand waving, we actually arrived at our first two finite difference approximations. We have a way of estimating a first order derivative as rise over run, and maybe a little bit more strange looking, we have a way of estimating a second order derivative. And we're doing this all with discrete data. We have a discrete function. That's what a finite difference approximation is. And later on, we'll discover much more sophisticated ways of calculating these finite differences and how to estimate them in any order derivative and any distribution of points. 
generalizing the concept of finite differences. Let's restrict ourselves to two dimensions for right now, but we can write finite differences in any number of dimensions. Let's just say we have a scattering of points, no pattern to them, they're everywhere, but we have some distribution of points. We will know their positions, their X and Y values. And we'll also know the function at each of those points. So we have function and position at each of those points. Now suppose we would like to estimate the derivative of any order A. So the first derivative, second derivative, whatever, we would like to estimate that at some point, and it could be within these points, it could be out here, but we want to somehow use information from the blue points to calculate a derivative at the red point. That is a finite difference. How do we do that? Well, it turns out it will always end up with the same form. It's basically, we're just going to add all of the function values at all those points multiplied by some magical coefficients. And simply by choice of those coefficients, we can estimate, we can either interpolate the function or any of its derivatives. So by changing the position of this point or the position of points we're calculating from, all that's doing is changing the numbers that go into these magical coefficients. So finite differences is always somehow a linear sum of the function values scattered around the point that we wanna estimate the derivative. It always has that form. So how do we calculate those coefficients? And we already did that for some finite differences. There's a much more general and much more powerful way that we'll discuss later, but not here. But no matter what, a finite difference always ends up with that form, and that's useful to know. So the information from the positions of the points goes into these coefficients. Let's draw it this way. So we have some space that we're operating in. The blue points is where we have our function values and the red point is where we want to evaluate the finite difference. And it's some linear sum of the function values at those blue points. I'll say something here that's very important and very useful. The finite coefficient, the finite difference coefficients only depend on the relative positions of these points, not their absolute positions. And let's do some examples to illustrate what I'm talking about. Let's say I grab all of these points and just slide them down here, but keeping their relative positions intact. Well, it turns out the finite difference at this red point is the exact same as the finite difference up here because we have not changed any of the relative positions. So finite difference coefficients are the same, and we'll use this property where we can translate positions of points and end up with the same finite difference coefficients because we can translate them to a much more convenient position. So here we have the same blue points, but we move the red point a little bit. You know what, entirely new finite difference coefficients, we have to start all over. Yes, even though the blue points are all the same, we've moved the red point, so the relative positions of the blue points relative to the red point has changed, and so we have to start all over. What if we keep the red point the same, but redistribute the blue points? Again, this is an entirely new problem. We need completely new finite differences. The only thing we're free to do is keep this group of points intact, but move them around. We, if all we're doing is translating, the finite difference coefficients remain the same. And this is hugely useful, and you'll see how we use this in later lectures. There's some terminology that comes up, and so we'll discuss different types of finite differences, but I don't want your mind to get locked into these because we're going to generalize the concept. So we start off with what's called a central finite difference. This is the best. This is what we always want to do. And that means we have these discrete function values, but we're evaluating the derivative at the midpoint between two function values. That is a central finite difference, and that's always the most accurate finite difference. This is what we would always like to do if we can. There's what's called a forward finite difference. For some reason, we don't know any function values over here and we're estimating the derivative, but we're going to say the derivative exists at the first point and we're using information ahead, forward of that point. So we call that a forward finite difference. Likewise, maybe we can only reach backward to estimate the derivative at this point F2. This is called a backward 
finite difference. So the forward and the backward are not as desirable as the central finite difference. We'll always prefer to use the central finite difference, but there are times that we're forced to use the forward or backward finite difference. And we will see this in later lectures. So to try to break away from this concept of forward, backward, central finite differences, really we can calculate the finite difference at any intermediate point. In fact, even outside these points, we could calculate and still estimate a derivative out here based on knowledge of F1, F2, and F3. That may not be a real accurate way to do it, but maybe that's the only way we can do it. And it's certainly possible the math lets us do that. But here I'm showing the finite difference coefficients and how they change depending on where we're calculating this. So really what we see is that central, forward, and backward are just special cases. We can evaluate this the finite difference at any point. It's a continuum. So don't have your mind locked into there only being central, forward, or backward. Uh, we can calculate the derivative anywhere, even out here. It may not be accurate to do that, but we can still do that and figure out coefficients to make that work. Generalizing is even more. We can wiggle the, where the function points are. We're wiggling around where we're evaluating the function. There's even a moment where we're evaluating the function outside of where these, uh, evaluating the derivative outside of where our function values are. And we're looking at these finite difference coefficients as we change all of this. And notice the form of this is still the same. It's just a linear sum of the function values, just with some magical number multiplying them that somehow comes from the positions of all of these points. So I hope this sufficiently generalizes the concept of a finite difference. People talk about central, forward, backward, but those are just very specific cases. A finite difference, we're just estimating the derivative given some smattering of function values, and it's always in the form of a linear sum of function values. So just to summarize all this, there's two key considerations with finite differences. One is the positions of the points that we're calculating the finite difference from. We would like these to be as closely spaced as possible. That makes it more accurate. The second thing is the point where we're calculating the finite difference. We would like it to be as centralized within the smattering of values as possible. We can make the math work and estimate the finite difference out here based on functions over here. Um, but we don't want to do that. We really want to be as central to our data as possible. And that's why a central finite difference, if we can do it, is always desired. And you'll see how we go through extremes later on to ensure that we're always using finite, central finite differences. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.